in this new age that we've entered and that is about to start accelerating very, very quickly. And as we try to keep up with what the mark of the beast is and what that's going to look like coming up here soon, uh, there's something that uh, I think that we need to spend some time on. And it's something as simple as learning a, a new language, <laughs> something as simple as that. Uh, me personally, I know one language and I know about 10% of Spanish. Uh, I can recognize some words and that's about it. But this new language is the language of what's coming. It's the language of the new age. It's the language of God. And it always has been. But uh, if you're like me, you've never really paid much of attention to it. I really haven't when I've, when I've ever been presented with Jumatra, um, I've always kind of shrugged it off as though it wasn't relevant or it wasn't something that I needed to learn until very, very recently. And as I learned um, as recently as last night, Jumatra not only is something that we really need to understand, but we need to understand the new version that's coming within the beast system. And that is quantum Jumatra. And quantum is a word that we're going to have to get very, very familiar with because quantum is going to be coming at us from every angle. Forget about the jab. Forget about the roll up your sleever as Montegraff, who kind of clued me into this whole uh, quantum thing, would say. What's coming is not a roll up your sleever, but rather a quantum dot. And that's where we're really going with this new technology of the new age that we're in since the transition on December 21st. And it's about to be rolled out very, very quickly. And when we say quantum, we need to think quantum everything, quantum computing, quantum dots, D-wave, the black cube, all of the things that have been worked on underneath our noses for years and years by the white hats that have led us to where we are now. So I wanted to give you a quick introduction to what sounds very complicated, but I think the spirit of God can lead us into learning it. It's just going to take some study. It's called quantum gematra mathematical monotheism, and it's going to blow your mind. I'm just beginning to study it on a very high level and I'm going to dive in a lot deeper. So before I get into this, I just want to say what I want you to do, and I think we should all do, I'm going to leave this link to this specific um, uh, article that was put out by a man named Leo Tavares just about a week ago on a very strange URL, sites.google.com slash site slash mathematical monotheism slash quantum dash gematra. I don't know how you make a site that's just sites.google.com slash site, but there must be a way because he did. And uh, God has led this man, whoever he is, Leo, Leo Tiberis, into something that we all need to study. So let's, let's, I'm just going to read the first few pages of this. It's 65 pages long. I'll link it and I want you to immediately print this off on your printer because if the internet does go down we are transferring to a new internet uh, system in the next I think few weeks uh, Odin I, I believe is what it's going to be called so this one's going to be shut down um, so we want to we want to peel off every p a bit of information that we can off of it while we still can and this one is hugely important uh, so click on that link print it off uh, I really struggled printing it off today. I ran into problem after problem. My black ink ran out, couldn't find a black ink cartridge, ran out of paper, paper jam, blah, 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 blah. I'm panicking, trying to get it printed as quick as I can and, and sweating and everything else and, you know, that whole thing. But um, uh, just print it off as soon as you can because I think it's important. Let's just read the first few pages and you can see where it's going to lead. Quantum Gematra by Leo Tavares. Imagine if you could wake up one morning and actually know that Christian theism is true and not merely believe that it is true. Well, that time has arrived. The amazing discoveries you're about to read 
were revealed to me by God, who is the ultimate source of all mathematical truth. The proof r- rooted in the mathematical series of prime slash composite numbers in the, I think it's called Fibonacci, Fibonacci number series, as well as the decimal expansion of the golden ratio. It's sounding complicated up front. Don't let it intimidate you. Let's just roll through this first few. And, we, and then, like I said, you can take it with the spirit of God one step at a time. I will demonstrate how the mathematical signature of Jesus Christ is not only coded in the natural order of these fundamental number series through the key values of 37 and 19. Now, I don't know anything about 19 yet, but I know 37 it represents perfection. Three represents the earth. Seven is the perfect number. Okay, so perfect earth. Uh, continuing, it is geometrically united with them through the natural divisions of the hexagram. I will also demonstrate how this ties in with the very fun- fundamental structure of the universe itself. It is mathematically impossible to construct a more truer statement than the following. Jesus Christ is God. The original languages of the Bible, Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New Testament, are both alphanumeric. And, okay, and, and see, I, I'm so simple when it comes to Gematra. I might sound like a fool right now. Maybe you guys are way ahead of me. But I didn't even know that Hebrew and Greek were both alphanumeric languages. And what it says is, which means every letter in the biblical Hebrew Greek alphabets is also a number. So I always thought Gematra kind of was nonsense. I didn't realize each number connected directly uh, in the alphabet. <laughs> Makes a big difference in my mind. This is not a modern invention, it goes on to say, but is an ancient numbering system of biblical Hebrew and Greek. Hence, every word slash phrase is the original, in the original languages through which the Bible was revealed, has a numeric value that is set in stone through simply adding up the letter values in a given Hebrew or Greek word or phrase in the original languages of the Bible. There are two primary methods through which numbers are assigned to biblical Hebrew slash Greek alphabets, the standard method and the ordinal method. Here are the standard numerical values of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And then it gives us the Hebrew standard and the Hebrew ordinal. So I I would imagine these are going to come in very important as we go through the 65 page lesson that we're not going to go through tonight <laughs> together, but that you can go through with the spirit uh, yourself. Now, this is where I, this is where this really sucked me in immediately. I, well, first I read the conclusion on page 65. When, when I'm trying to find information that I want to know if it's really going to be relevant or draw me in, the first thing I do is read the first paragraph, then I go to the end and read the conclusion. And so when I read the conclusion, I was like, yeah, this sounds like something I want to continue with. But when I read this is when it really struck me as this is something I want to continue with. Genesis 1.1, in the mathematical foundation of biblical numerics, which is fitting indeed, since it is the very first verse, first verse of the Bible, it introduces the biblical creation account. The mathematical coding in Genesis 1.1 is rooted in the flawless number 37. We will eventually see how all of creation is rooted in the number 37 as well. Remember, three is earth, seven is the perfect number. Here are the standard Hebrew numeric values of the seven Hebrew words in Genesis 1-1, the first seven words of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it gives the numeric values to each of those words in Hebrew, and they directly translate to 37 times 73, which is perfection meeting in the middle. And then it says, notice that Genesis 1.1, the product of 37 and its mirror reflection, 73. These are the prime factors of Genesis 1.1. In fact, the only way to produce Genesis 1.1 as a product of two numbers is 37 by 73. Besides... 2,701 times 1. So it's the only other factor that can equal the combination of those alphanumeric numbers. Further, the numeric value of Genesis 1-1, which is 2,701, 
is the first and only known composite number out of the first 10,000 that have been checked, whereby it yields its prime factors when it is added to its mirror reflection. And you can see what that looks like. So some of this sounds like it might hold some water, which it sure does to me. Um, I sure want to dive deeper into this. And I think it's important that a lot of us do um, as we move forward. So again, I'll link this um, printed out. It's, uh, it's only, well, 65 pages. And uh, just start studying. And let's see where we lead.